Hi, it's Richard here from the OPA Hub website. Thanks for choosing our Siebel and OPA integration webinar. It's great to have you here. This short module will tell you what the agenda is and what you need to do to be ready to follow all of the other content in this course. First of all, everything in this course, the slides, the commentary, and all of the walkthroughs of each of the different steps Everything is provided through streaming video. If you're watching this video, in theory, it means that you can watch the others, but don't forget that you can find the correct URLs in the email you received when you bought this course. Secondly, all the content of this course has been created by the OPA Hub. It only uses OPA Hub materials, and as such, they cannot be copied, recorded, or reused without our permission. Here's the agenda for the rest of the webinar. After this chapter, in Chapter 2, we'll introduce you to the concepts of how Siebel and OPA might talk to each other. We'll look at both the Siebel and the OPA side. We'll look at a couple of functional scenarios dedicated at getting OPA visible inside Siebel. We'll also talk about the prerequisites, what you need to be able to do the walkthroughs yourself on your own environment. And we'll give you some pointers as to how you can set that up quickly. In Chapter 3, we'll look at the basics, how to set the groundwork so that Siebel and OPA can talk. In Chapter 4, which is broken down into multiple parts, we'll go through each of the standard mechanisms to make OPA and Siebel communicate. So we'll look at implementing Check Alive, Get Metadata, which are useful at design time, and load and submit, which are used at runtime, but also the optional methods, set checkpoint and get checkpoint, and all the other technical things you need to do to make them work on the OPA side and the Siebel side. Once we've looked at those, you will be in a position to implement a, a graphical integration of OPA inside Siebel. But what if you don't want to have a graphical interface? You can use some of the other web services provided by OPA. So we'll look at the Assess web ser service and the Answer web service and understand what the differences are between them. In Chapter 6, given that this course is dedicated purely to Siebel and OPA, we're not going to spend time telling you how to build a symbolic URL, or we're not going to tell you how to build an OPA rule base. So the what's left to do will tidy up any things that you might have not necessarily remembered that need to be done to make this work. And then we'll sign off with a summary of what you've done. Before going any further, it's important to remember that it's your responsibility to make sure that what you're doing is on an environment that you have control over, you have permission to use, you have backups for, you have licenses for, and you have any policies or procedures in place, you are not breaking company or, or organizational policy. This is your responsibility, nobody else's. Having said that, let's get started. 